Is it possible to have your soul stuck? Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. For some of you, it's an odd concept. For many of you, it's the one you learned. I want you to relax for a moment where I tell you another story, perhaps. I mean, a story about a magnificent soul, not a soul that is inclined to have a three-dimensional attributes in a paradigm, a soul that is not punished or rewarded, a soul that doesn't get stuck in some place between heaven and hell. All of those things that I just mentioned to you are constructs of a human. Mimicking a template of human existence, not divine existence. The question, is it possible to have your soul stuck? Answer, no. The actual question is a non sequitur. It doesn't make sense to even ask something like that. Is it possible to have God stuck or God in indecision? Is it possible to have God have indigestion? <laughs> and you might say, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's a stupid question. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. This soul of yours, I want to talk more about it because this is the time for you to relearn and reframe into an awakening state that I would love for you to be in. Many of you are listening to this now, and this is new information. There are others who are listening to this now, and this is information I've been giving, and you've known maybe all your life. And that tells you the vast variance of personalities who watch this particular thing called channeling. And there are so many more that are perhaps interested in what this is. I will again, I will, I will again give you the definition. This, this thing you call channeling, it really hasn't changed over the years. What has changed is the awakening of humanity that is starting to recognize what it might be. If an angel came and stood before you and you could ask whatever question or, or simply quiet while it, while it talked to you, that is channeling messages from the other side of the veil. Now this veil that you have described as a veil, which separates the human paradigm from the divine paradigm, or what many have said is earth from heaven, this particular veil is starting to become thinner. And this has been happening now for the last two decades, actually the last three. My partner has experienced this because when he started, the veil was quite thick compared to now. Now, when he started, if you back up maybe 30 or 40 years before that, it was the same as when he started, very thick. When my partner started with Cryon, there were those who called him the cosmic evil of the century. There were those even in metaphysics who could not believe what they were hearing. He wasn't right. There were those who said, well, you can't step between sides of the veil. You cannot have an angel who is then talking to you without having some kind of gyrations, you might say, of energy between that which is earth and that which is heaven. They went on and on giving all the reasons that they had learned from an old paradigm, old teachings, old ideas, none of which were divine. All those ideas, dear ones, that I just mentioned, and all of those, would you call it, assaults, complaints, come from programming. What were you told when you were born about how it works? And that is the problem, if you want to say, with almost any reframing. You have to come to a point where you say, I allow new information to be presented, which I did not learn. I allow new information to, present, to be presented, which I learned from people I loved. 
I allow information to be updated and reframed from people that I trusted and were doing the very best they could to give me what they thought was true. So it's not like you were, you were taught wrong. You were given the very best that they had. But as the veil lifts and the light is turned on, a greater truth is revealed. That doesn't make everybody else before you wrong that gave you that. It means they didn't have the light that is now being revealed. They didn't have the light that is turned on letting you see the things that are so now self-evident. Self-evident and, and, and spiritual, spiritual common sense that is now starting to appear. And that is this. Your soul is part of God. It's not a, a human attribute that comes with you in some spiritual way that then you can manipulate in stories and have it stuck over here or maybe not getting to where it should be or, or you did something wrong or you did something right or you didn't do it properly in the, in the context you were told. Therefore, your soul gets not punished but worse, stuck. <laughs> and that's what you've been told. The soul is a piece of the Creator. I wish I could take you there. I wish I could, I could say, drop into your heart for a moment and come with me. I, I wish I could do that. Well, I can and I do. For there is something that so many of you have discovered called the Circle of Twelve. Now, this particular program that you are watching has a Circle of Twelve with it where we visit the soul in a very personal, beautiful, majestic way every single week. But this particular channeling is also available worldwide without that which is the Circle of Twelve. So I would like to tell all of you now, right now, that one of the new attributes of the human being is the ability to visit pieces and parts of the soul energy that you were never able to visit before. In the circle of 12, we cross a, a bridge. It's a visualized, metaphoric bridge. It symbolizes going from one energy to another, a known energy, a 4D energy, to a multidimensional energy that is just filled with majesty and peace and safety and that my dear ones is where you learn all about that which is your soul which is home that which is truly where you're from and that's when you realize the absurdity of somebody saying I think his soul is stuck <laughs> I think God has indigestion because he ate the wrong thing yesterday these are all kinds of constructs of that which is the human being, the existence, the paradigm, the reality of what a human being perceives. And that's where the whole idea of a God who loves you so much and so dearly would then punish you if you did something wrong. And that something wrong varies from belief system to belief system. And sometimes that's something wrong is you, you go see a doctor. <laughs> it it is, is even if you wear the wrong thing or don't wear something. You really think the creator of the universe cares what you wear. You have free choice to honor or not honor the God inside. That's the free choice you have. And no God who gives you free choice is then going to instantly judge you for the choice you made. That is not even logical in your dimension dear ones this soul of yours is so beautiful you are born in majesty born magnificent with that in you and everything that follows is what you do with it none of you were born dirty on this earth and what I mean by that there is always a system that will tell you that you came into this planet 
doomed, hopeless, and that your soul is not magnificent. It's dirty because of something that happened in some story that was given to you on the planet. There are even those who say, well, you know there were multiple wars in heaven. And I'll tell you, yes, that's probably because God ate the wrong thing in the morning and he has indigestion. It's just as ridiculous. Think about it. Drop into your heart for a moment and think about this. The beauty of everything that exists is part of you as you look upon the stars, as you concern yourself perhaps with the things around you, but you let love drive you. The love has come from your soul. A soul that is as big as the universe, you might say, because in a multidimensional, timeless place, there is no space. And therefore, your soul just is. Just like spirit, just is. Just like the love of God, just is. If you know nothing, nothing more from this, perhaps even controversial channel, is to say you're far more magnificent than to think for even a second that the beauty of God in you would be stuck somewhere. It doesn't work that way. Spirit sees you as magnificent and beautiful and always will, regardless of the choices you make. You are like a child of the Creator, loved beyond measure, and you're never alone. And so it is. If you enjoyed this channeling, you might also enjoy the weekly program It Came From, Wednesdays with Cryon, a heartfelt 90-minute program with more of what you've just experienced. Why not join us?